hey welcome back my name is sushant sutish and i am your trainer for this angel administrator associate examination course we have just finished the second module and in this video we're going to go through the review questions of the lessons what we have learned on the previous module let's look at the first question you need to target policies and review spend budgets across several subscriptions you manage what should you do and you can only select one answer from below so the key word here is you need to target policies and you need to review spend budgets so what can you do is it create a resource group definitely not resource group is a logical container you have to create to place your azure workloads is it create azure policies yeah you can create policies to place any condition on any workload but that is not going to resolve targeting and reviewing spends is it billing groups definitely not that is not going to resolve either so the correct answer is create management groups management group can be used to organize and manage subscriptions let's look at question number 2 you would like to categorize resources and billing for different departments like IT and HR the billing needs to be consolidated across multiple resource groups and you need to ensure that everyone complies with this solution what should you do so you need to choose two to complete the solutions so within the exam you might find you need to choose more than one answer to complete the whole solution so what are the keywords here so you need to categorize and you need to categorize resources and billing for different departments and you need a solution for that and the second is the billing need to be consolidated across multiple resource group so is it create a subscription account rule definitely not is it add the group into a single resource group by adding a group into a resource group is not going to solve that problem is it create a billing group for each department that is a time consuming and not an efficient way of doing things so the correct answer is create tags for each department so by creating tags you would be able to filter and categorize each department using different tag and the second answer is create an azure policy as well so you should create a tag with key value pair like department like hr or sales etc and then you can then create an azure policy which requires the tag to be applied before a resource is created that's why these two are part of the solution so let's look at the third question your company financial controller wants to be notified whenever the company is halfway to spending the money allocated for cloud services what should you do and you need to select one only one answer all right so the key over here is you need to have a mechanism to notify your financial controller whenever you are nearing to your spending limit so is it by creating an azure subscription uh, sorry is it by creating an azure reservation definitely not reservation is an ability to reserve a compute in azure to save cost on this workload is it to create a management group management group is created to manage multiple subscriptions at once is it entering workload in the total cost of ownership calculator it's absolutely ridiculous so these three are not the right answer so the correct answer is create a budget and a spending threshold billing alerts help you monitor and manage billing activity for your azure accounts you can set up a total of 5 billing alerts per subscriptions with a different threshold and up to 2 email recipients for each alert monthly budgets are evaluated against spending every 4 hours and budgets reset automatically at the end of the period let's look at the next question 
Your organization has several Azure policies that you would like to create and enforce for a new branch office. What should you do? And you need to select one answer. This is pretty straightforward question. So you have several Azure policies and uh, what can you do to enforce it? We just learned about it. So the correct answer is Azure Policy Initiative. Nothing else can resolve it, not by creating a management group or not by creating a resource group or not by having a subscription. So you have a bunch of Azure policies. You create a policy initiative to enforce these policies to your branch office. A policy initiative would include all the policies of interest. Once your initiative is created, you can assign the definition to establish a scope. A scope determines what resources or grouping of resources the policy assignment gets enforced on. Right, so the next question is, your manager asks you to explain how Azure uses resource group. You provide all the following information except one. So I think three of the solution or three of the choices given below are right and one of the statement is wrong. So we just have to eliminate which one is wrong. So I'm gonna read out from the beginning. Resources can be in only one resource group, which is absolutely right. You, 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 when you create an Azure resource, you are supposed to place that resource in a logical container called resource group and you can only place that resource in one resource group. Second statement. Resources can be moved from one resource group to another resource group. Absolutely possible. So when you would like to move a resource from one resource to another resource group, all you have to do is log into the Azure portal or use the PowerShell and move a resource from one resource group to another resource group. Another tip is that you can move resources from one subscription to another subscription as well. Not all the resources though, but most of the resources are possible. The next option is resource groups can be nested. Uh, that is not possible. Resource groups cannot be nested. So that is the wrong option here, but the right answer for this particular question. So let's, so let's read the last option. Role-based access control can be applied to the resource group. Absolutely possible. So you can create a role-based access control granular permission to the resource group or for resources as well. Let's look at the question number six. Which of the following would be a good example of when to use a resource lock? Select one. Again, we are gonna go through each statement and we are gonna find the appropriate statement where we feel this is the best place where we can use the resource lock. So I'm gonna start from the bottom. A resource group for a new branch office that is just starting up. Mm, I don't think you need to place a resource group or a resource lock for a resource group for a new branch office which is just starting up. It is not even relevant for it. Uh, a storage account used to temporarily store image, images processed in a development environment. Absolutely not because first of all, it's a development environment. And second of all, it's a temporary store to place your image processing. So you don't need a lock there. It's not a critical resource. Next statement, a non-production virtual machine used to test occasional application build. Again, not an ideal scenario where you will place a resource lock because first of all, it's a non-production virtual machine. And second, it is only occasionally used to test. So the correct answer is an express route circuit with connectivity back to your on-premises network. Resource lock prevent another user in your organization from accidentally deleting or modifying critical resource. An express route is a critical resource in an organization. All right, let's look at question number seven. Your company hires a new IT administrator. She need to manage a resource group with first tier web servers, including assigning permissions. However, she should not have access to other resource group inside the subscription. All right, so 
we need to prevent her from accessing other resources within the subscription. That's the key statement here, guys. And you need to configure role-based access. What should you do? And you only need to select one. So what do you guys think the right answer is? Is it assigning her a subscription owner access? Definitely not. If you assign the IT administrator the subscription owner right, she would be able to access any resources in that particular subscription. Is it assigning her with a subscription contributor? Again, she would be able to access other resources within the subscription as well. Is it assigning her to the resource group owner? Absolutely correct. So you would assign this IT administrator lady a resource group owner rights because the new IT administrator need to be able to assign just permissions. To assign permission, you need an owner right, not the contributor right. All right, so let's look at the last question on this module. You have three virtual machines, VM1, VM2, and VM3 in a resource group. The help desk hires a new employee. The new employee must be able to modify the settings on VM3, but not on VM1 and VM2. Your solution must minimize administrative overhead. What should you do and select one? So the new employee must only be able to modify the settings on VM3. So you need to prevent that employee from modifying anything on VM1 and VM2. So out of these options, what do you think is going to be the right answer? So let's go and read out the statements. Assign the, assign the user to the contributor role on the resource group. Definitely not. Because if you assign somebody a contributor role on the resource group, that user will be able to modify anything within that resource group. That includes VM1 and VM2. So the next option is assign the user the contributor role on VM3. Absolutely right. So you only assign the contributor role on VM3 so that the user can modify anything on VM3, but not on VM1 and VM2. So that is the right answer. So now we have finished two modules and we have gone through two modules review questions. In the next module, I'm going to take you through Azure administration. So within Azure administration, our first lesson is going to be resource manager. So I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care.